All right, so we're on chapter three of The Twits. Dirty Beards. As you know, an ordinary, unhairy face like yours or mine simply get a bit smudgy if it's not washed often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling to the hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right in among the hairs and stay there. Ugh. And you and I can wipe our smooth faces with, with a cloth and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy man cannot do that. We can also, if we are careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so of the hairy man. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you will notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream or chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of the food on his hairs. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, he because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfast and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand or his sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely, not that you would ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs and spinach and tomato and ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken liver livers and all the other disgusting things Mr. Twit liked to eat. If you look closer still, hold your noses, lady and, ladies and gentlemen. If you peered, peered is another word for look, if you peer deep into the mustachy bristles sticking out all over his upper lip, you would probably see a much larger object that had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of maggoty green cheese or moldy old cornflake or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Blech. Because of all this, Mr. Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it to the sideways or to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. And that's the end of chapter three.